Hello, welcome back to another installment in the book of John, chapter 5. We're reading from verse 1 down to 17. I'm reading from the New American Standard Version, and it goes like this. After these things, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem, by the Sheep Gate, a pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porticos. In these lay a multitude of those who were sick, blind, lame, and withered, waiting for the movement of water, for an angel of the Lord went down at certain session seasons into the pool and stirred up the water whenever then for, whoever then first, after the stirring of the water, stepped in was made well from whatever disease with which he was afflicted. A man was there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him laying there and knew that he had already been a long time in that condition, he said to him, Do you wish to get well? The man answered him, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your pallet, and walk. Now, it was the Sabbath on that day, so the Jews were saying to the man who was cured, It is a Sabbath, and it is not permissible for you to carry your pallet. But he answered them, He who made me well was the one who said to me, Pick up your pallet and walk. They said to him, who is that man who said to you, pick up your pallet and walk? But the man who was healed did not know who it was, for Jesus slipped away while there was a crowd in that place. Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, Behold, you have become well. Do not sin any more, so that nothing worse happens to you. The man went away and told the Jews it was Jesus who had made him well. For this reason, the Jews were persecuting Jesus because he was doing these things on the Sabbath. And he answered them, My father is working until now, and I myself am working. Let's pray. Father, we need you. We need your Holy Spirit to teach us. Release your spirit of instruction, of encouragement, of teaching upon us that we may learn and be more and more like you in personality, character, and nature. We need you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. It's interesting, if you look around the globe, all around the globe, there are places in like India or Indonesia or England or Germany, hospitals with the name Bethesda. And Bethesda is, as it pointed out, the, uh, a, a Hebrew word, and it means house of healing, or, or excuse me, house of kindness, or house of mercy. And from that we get the idea of healing. Now, this pool, this pool for us is, uh, as we look at it, we, the big picture is that people came to this pool for healing. That was the whole whole uh, reason for them to be laying around there. And the porticos is a word for kind of like a porch. Um, the porticos on the outside of, of an edifice is a, uh, is for us, let's call them porches. And so all around these on the, on these five porches uh, is this uh, is this group of people that are waiting to get into the water to to uh, be healed, and they're waiting for it to be stirred up, and then they get in the water, and one of them gets healed. Or, and and for us, Jesus is that place. Jesus is that pool for us. Um, we don't go to a pool. Um, we go to church. We go to church for healing. We go to God for healing. And, and Jesus is that point. And it, the reason we go to church has been, um, hasn't always been sincere or right or 
for the right purposes. Uh, you know, obviously kids get dragged there, parent, you know, people get dragged to church for, you know, because that's what grandpa did, that's what mom did. And the real reason for going to church is really none other than to meet Jesus. Uh, certainly the, uh, the, the church is a hospital and it's a place of healing. Um, but at the center of that is Jesus. It's never a pastor or a favorite Sunday school teacher, although those are important. Uh, Sunday school teachers go, pastors go. The reality is, is that we go to church for Jesus, to learn about him, to be more like him, to celebrate him, to enjoy his presence through the Holy Spirit. And, and this pool is, is for us uh, kind of that center point in the story where things that people are meeting. You've got the sick people and, and you've got Jesus and his disciples and the pool is, is only a place to meet. Church is only a place to meet. It is a place where things happen and then you disperse from there and go. And that's exactly what, this, what has happened here in this story. And for us, last week we had church. It was a drive-in church because of this COVID-19 thing. And, and so we had church here and everyone was saying the same thing. It was so good to have church. It was so good to be amongst our people, our people. So the people of Jesus, the people that Jesus has um, instructed through his Holy Spirit, who, have re who he has redeemed, who he has died for, those people have become like him and have emulated him in a way that the personality, character, nature of Jesus Christ in them is influencing and affecting the behavior and, and um, relationship of other people. That's how it works. Jesus came to the pool and met a guy. That guy had been there for 38 years, and Jesus had this exchange with him. The man was healed, and he went and told the message. He started sharing, and it was undeniable because he before he wasn't walking, and now he's walking. That's pretty distinct, and that's a great conversation starter. Our healing, our character change should be a conversational starter. And, you know, for us you know, when we're looking at this pool and learning from the scripture, we all need that pool. We all need this place of healing. I was visiting some friends. I was actually working at their house, uh, installing a heat pump. And these two are seasoned Christians. And I sat in their, uh, on their couch and uh, she got me this ice cream. It was wonderful ice cream. French vanilla. It was, and, and they spoke healing to me. They were sweet. They were wonderful. They were, they were just, uh, um, medicine. They were vocal medicine. And, and it was just a, a, a place of, uh, where you could just relax. They were a pool of, of refreshment to me. Now, I had worked my tail off at their house, but they were, uh, to me, they were not get in here, get out. They were, come be part of my family. And, and, and we need that. We need to be that for others. And, and so there is a time when we're, we are the pool and there's a time we go to the pool. And you know, when we look at the guy that moving on, but we, we, when we look at this guy, uh, it, it's it, you've got to admire his consistency. Thirty-eight years, yeah, this guy wanted healing. He wanted to be better. He wanted to be. He wanted that uh, the the ability to walk around and be independent. 
Um, he's, I, I just, I love this guy. I love that he never gave up. I, he reminds me of the uh, woman and the unjust judge in the scripture, the parable where this woman, had, she had, there was an injustice in her life and she kept going to this judge. And the judge was like, I'm just going to help this lady out. She's going to drive me crazy. And, and Jesus says, go to God like that. This is how we pray. We don't give up. We don't give up. Keep going. Go. Take the hill. Never stop. 38 years. 38 years. This guy never gives up. Keeps going to the pool. People keep getting ahead of him and healing. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden. I'll give you rest. This man finally found rest. He finally found healing. He met Jesus at the pool. Ah, this is good. It's good. I shared that uh, I love to lay in bed and put on my phone, and it reads the scripture to me. This, there is just, it's healing. It, it's, it's just one of the, uh, yeah, this is a theological term. It, it's just so cool. It's just so cool. You lay there in bed and you just, you just, it's, it's like the, it, the scripture says that the wa the word washes us and, and it's like you lay in there in bed and, and you're just being washed by the word. It's these healing words, these words of instructions, the, these words of encouragement, there's words of rebuke. Yeah. And I need that too, but you just lay there and it's just, wow. This is so healing. And, and sometimes we need to do that. Sometimes we don't have what it takes to speak healing into others. And so we need to get alone and have the Lord speak to us with this word. It's why the word is so important. Now, you speaking of that, all around us are people that are sick. Now, they may not be sick with like uh, leprosy or, or cancer or something like that. Something you, you can't, that you and I can't do anything for them other than praying. But all around us are people who are emotionally beset. There's people that have been, had broken relationships. Their, their parents are, uh, in, in my case personally, their parents are, our um, mom has COVID, dad has lung cancer and Alzheimer's. And, you know, it's nice to have people speak kindness to me right now. And I, I got a card the other day and it wasn't signed. Nobody, they didn't say this is so-and-so and I want, they were just, they just wrote me really nice healing words. It was beautiful. You know, you, to, you, you gra grab the mail and, you know, here's some more bills. And, and he has a card of healing. And, and all around us are people who are in different stages of, of uh, needing healing or able to be speaking healing. And, and so we, we, we need to be aware of the fact that we're somewhere in that mix. Um, for one person, we may be stronger. For another person, we may need their strength. We're, we're not all 100%, we're not all zero. We're at various stages. And so we have to have our ears and our eyes open and, and be able to recognize that, you know, it's not all about me. It's not all, I need healing, it's all about me. You serve me, you serve me, I'm special, I always need, uh, serve me. It, it's not that. If you're always looking to be um, served, you're, you've, you've missed the salvation message. You don't come to Jesus to get served. You, you come to Jesus to be made well, and then you can go out and, and help others. That's the cycle. If it stops at you, you didn't understand the message. You didn't receive the message. You didn't receive the Holy Spirit. It's not about you. It's about others. And, and uh, Jesus went to the pool, and it was about serving others. The last verse in this passage explains that. We'll get to that in a minute. So th there's this offense. Um, Jesus... Well, let me let me take a step back. I know I I, I don't I, I don't want to uh, I don't want to miss this. 
and, and I, I, there needs to be a balance in my message. Uh, we need to encourage each other, but we also want to make sure that we, we don't do certain things. I know a couple Christians here in this community in Bangor. They go to other churches, and they're, uh, they're very um, uh, confrontational, and they brag about that. And like, I showed him today, I showed him, well, so-and-so tried to do this and they were either shopping or they were, they were getting, they were, they were having exchanges with other people and they showed them, I taught them and people don't need to be taught. They need to be ministered to and I hope people at Bangor Nazarene are not doing that because I don't want our church to have a reputation of having bullies. Uh, bullying isn't, <laughs> that Jesus doesn't raise bullies. He ra raises disciples and people that emulate him. And uh, bullying isn't that, that's, that's not one of his characteristics. It's not a spiritual gift. And, and, and there you go. I, I just really felt like that needed to be shared. Now, Jesus said to this cat, this character, sorry, a little 60s lingo there for you. He says to this guy, go and sin no more. He met him again later and he says, look, go and sin no more that, you're, that things don't go worse for you. So there's something in this guy's life that was uh, debilitating to him. Now, I, I used to work with a lady. I keep throwing people under the bus. So how about that? Um, I used to work with this lady. She was caustic. And, and she just, really, she was the type that when you found out you, she was a Christian, you'd go like, what? You're a Christian? <laughs> Impossible. And she was caustic. She, she carried grudges. And I got to know her, and turns out her dad didn't do something for her. He, he should have done this. He was supposed to be there for her. Now, I get, I get it. You know, dads, dads need to be dads. But it was like she was, this, she was spoiled. And daddy didn't do this thing. And then daddy dies. And she carries this grudge forever. She's, uh, she's bitter. And, and she's unforgiving. And she's never moved on. And, and she's a Christian, and yet she's caustic and unforgiving. I'm sorry, but that's not how it works. Jesus said, if you forgive, you will be forgiven. That Jesus is the almighty forgiver, and if we don't in turn turn around and forgive, we've missed the message. It stops with us. It doesn't pass on, and that's not Christianity. That's not the personality, character, and nature of Jesus. It, 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 it doesn't stop with us. It carries on. It moves on. <clears throat> and, and so Jesus is, stop sinning. The, the, this thing that's in your life, stop doing it. And, and, and move on. Otherwise, it's going to be worse for you. And, and for that caustic woman, it was worse. Because you, you, you know how it is. You talk with other people. I, I, I was at the store and I smiled at this elderly guy. He smiled back. And, and you could see it in his eyes. You know how I know? Because he had a mask on. And I, but he could see that. I, you know, you know when people are smiling at you. And, and so he smiles back. We're masking each other. And I, I affected his day. Do you see that? And, and when you're caustic to other people, they're caustic back. And, and it, it, this is how it works. If, if you mistreat others, they're not going to come back to you and, oh, I, I just feel like blessing you more. It doesn't, that's not life. And so when the grace of God comes into our lives, it doesn't stop, it moves on. So if it has never moved on in your life, you need to find out where in the process you failed because you have failed if you're not passing on the graces of God. It, it, it's really that simple. Now, 
go and sin no more. Don't be caustic, be forgiving. And, and then Jesus says, I myself am working. In other words, God gave him an assignment to do, and he's about those things. I don't give, sorry, but Jesus is saying, I don't give a rip if it's the Sabbath. The guy needs healing. I'm healing him on the Sabbath. And he, 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 you know, all through the the, uh, uh, the the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all through those, you you see Jesus going into synagogue, and he tells like this guy, stick your hand out. He sticks his hand out, and his hand was healed. And and the and the and the Jews or the Pharisees and the Sadducees are like, he's healing on the Sabbath. He's working on the Sabbath, and and Jesus is like incredulously, see, what's wrong with you people? I'm doing the Father's business, and you're tying up loads on people. You're making their life harder. I'm trying to set them free over here, and you're weighed, weighing them down. And, and Jesus says, I'm about the work of my Father. And now this is you and I. The graces of God come to us. We're supposed to be about the work of the Father and carrying those graces to other people. It doesn't stop with us. If it stops with us, we're the problem. It's that simple. And so what do we do? We go to church to meet Jesus. That's why we go to church. We go to church and we learn to be more like Jesus. We don't stay at home. We, we get out there and we serve. And I know there's a time for healing. I get that. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at you. I understand. There's a time for healing to be alone. But there's a time to get off your butt and get out with people and, and to get out and be with others and, and share the love and share the story, the story that Jesus came into your life and has touched you and you share that with others. You, we're to be about the work of the Lord. Jesus is doing that. He's being about the work. People around us are in those different stages. Remember, I was just talking about those different stages. Someone around you is at a weaker stage and they need to hear from you. It's that simple. And it's not hard. Just be a good person. Do the right thing. And finally, keep pressing on. Keep, keep, 38 years. Come on, let's go. It's, we, let's pick it up. It's, we're not whiners. We're not sit around. We're not the church of God. The people of God are not lazy people. We get out. We press on. We keep going. If there's an offense, we keep moving. We keep forgiving. We keep trying to understand. We keep trying to do better. Amen? Let's do this. Let's pray. Father, we need you. We ask that you would guide us and give us direction. Give us strength. Show us someone that we can minister to. Show us someone that we can bless. Lord, be honored in our lives. Be, be, uh, be, uh, be our God. Be our strength. Be the strong right arm of the Lord and go before us. Lord, we ask that you'd bless us. Bless us indeed in expanding our territory. Would you keep us from evil? In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a stupendous week.